This is Max Williams with United Real Estate, and today I'm in Eastern Henrico. More specifically, I am in Verina, and today we're going to take a look at a four-bedroom, two-bath rancher. This rancher has a two-car detached garage. It's situated on almost a half an acre, and we've got a nice semi-rural setting here. We've got houses that are definitely nicely spaced apart, and we've got an awesome asking price here on this home. Uh, this is a prime example that you can get a nice affordable house with good square footage, good bedroom count for not a whole lot of money. Uh, this house is coming in 130000 and if you or your household brings in about $30,000, uh, thousand dollars $30,000, uh, this home may be right in your price range. Okay, this is what we call a pack unit. This is a heating and air unit, a heat pump, a heat pump is fueled by electricity and it provides both heating and cooling. I know that it is a pack unit for uh, one of a couple reasons. This ductwork here, this big, big ductwork that goes into the house, it provides the airflow into the home. Uh, we don't see many of these units, but there's something in particular I wanted to share with you uh, outside of the style of the unit. Um, right here, we can see that that label says R410A. That is the refrigerant that is used in this system. This would normally be a pink color. It's faded over time. But that is important. That is very, very important for the following reason. 410A is a refrigerant that is relatively new. The previous refrigerant was R22. It's not important to memorize these, these uh, letters and names. The bottom line, though, is that the old refrigerant, which is still in many, many homes today, is going to be illegal January 1st of 2020. That means any system that has that old refrigerant and you need repair or replacement, which includes the refrigerant, uh, bringing in new refrigerant, adding, uh, doing anything with it, it will be illegal for the heating and air technician to do that. What that means is basically your system is going to be obsolete. That's going to be huge because there are probably millions of those units still in place. And what would normally be just a simple repair is now going to be a complete system replacement. Uh, if you are an investor, it may be worth looking at these heating and air companies, carrier, if they're still around, uh, train, some of the others because I have a feeling that the sales are going to go up tremendously because people are not going to be able to have their unit serviced if it involves the refrigerant. So just a kind of a word for the wise for you. Uh, here on the exterior, we've got nice low maintenance. Uh, the roof is dimensional or architectural shingles. We've talked about that before. There's plenty of life on those roofs of that style. This home was built in 1969. However, it has definitely been renovated since then. Uh, I was kind of surprised when I saw that uh, date of build on it. So we've got a really good looking property. There is a storage building back there as well in addition to that two-car garage. Okay, let's go on in and take a look. Before we go in, I've got to warn you, you guys won't be able to tell, but I could tell when I first opened the door, we have a pretty heavy pet odor in this home. Uh, pet odor can be remedied a couple of ways. Typically, most of it is in the carpet and the pad. Uh, you'll be able to see the evidence here as we go in. If additional remediation is needed, it's simply a company to come in and treat the subfloor. Uh, there are companies that that's all they do is odor remediation, and that can usually be taken care of pretty easily. Otherwise, this home is in pretty good shape and uh, doesn't need a whole lot in terms of deferred maintenance. One of the best things about my job is being able to hand those keys to a first-time buyer. However, it's not always that pleasant when it comes to some real estate transactions. Unfortunately, there are times when I have to deal with individuals that are forced to sell, and those sales are what we call distress situations. Distress situations are sometimes estate sales, where a loved one passes away and the home must be liquidated, or they are short sales where the person selling is forced to sell because they're behind in their payments and they're facing foreclosure. Uh, I spoke with a 
lady recently and that she was in that situation. Uh, one thing that I found is that education or information is key when you're ever you're facing some type of crisis like that. Uh, I'll give you an example. She talked with someone. She got legal advice. And the person gave, giving her legal advice said, well, you just need to walk away from this home. And when I consulted with her, I said, that is absolutely horrific, horrific advice. And I explained to her why. With a short sale, walking away from the home or just simply not cooperating with the lending institution basically means they have to go about their process and spend the time and energy and the money to go ahead and take care of that what we call non-performing asset. They have to pay somebody to secure the property, to get you out, to get the items out. They have to pay the court system. They've got to go through a lot of time and energy to do that. There is a common term in the industry with foreclosures and with short sales. It's called cash for keys. Uh, the sophisticated term is sometimes relocation allowance. But basically what it means is they will give you money if you turn over the property to them and can do it without them going through a whole lot of drama and expense. Uh, the recent situation that I had, uh, my uh, seller was going to go ahead and leave the property and basically do a regular short sale. However, I shared with her that, hey, we may be able to get you some money to help you out here with this process. Lo and behold, the money was requested and the request was granted. Uh, do you think that about $7,000 would help someone in a position that pretty much just lost their house and is just trying to stay afloat and start over and maybe rent uh, a property to live in? Uh, you better believe it. $7,000 will go a long, long way for someone that wasn't expecting anything, and yet we're going to lose the biggest investment of their life. So I say that I can't stress enough. I'm actually, I might even put it on my business card. I might even put it on the back of my truck is you don't know what you don't know. And even people that are supposed to know these things, in many cases, don't. They don't teach this information in real estate school. You don't, you don't have any class on heating and air systems or short sales or cash for keys. Uh, please, you're already on YouTube. Take a look. Google, or excuse me, YouTube search cash for keys, and you'll see all types of articles, all types of uh, actually videos from attorneys all the way down to real estate investors, all types of people. There's even a news segment uh, I saw where a gentleman was supposed to get uh, cash for keys and he ended up moving out late and they just decided not to give it to him. Uh, so there's just all types of information out there, but you don't know what you don't know. So I share that with you to let you know that if you know someone that maybe is facing some type of real estate situation, whether it be just a normal sale or whether it be a uh, distressed situation like that. That's a distress right there because I'm going to have to come out of pocket. If I deal with a buyer that buys this house, I'm going to put a shower head on there as is my custom. We've got a little bit of cosmetic here. That's nothing. This house is in great shape. Otherwise, uh, as I mentioned before, that carpet and pad definitely needs to go. Got a little linen closet here. So if you know someone that is in that situation where they just need good advice, uh, I'm not a high pressure type person at all. I like to provide information. I want my viewers to know as much or more than the average agent out here working. That's, don't, don't tell anybody that, but that's kind of my goal. I want you guys to know exactly what's going on, particularly here in this metro Richmond market. A lot of this information is transferable to all parts of the country. Some small variations, but a lot of it is pretty universal. If you have questions about this or any other property on the market, my name is Max Williams. It would be my honor to help. I can reach you on Facebook under Richmond Area Foreclosures on YouTube under my name, Max Williams Realtor. Be sure to please like, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe so you don't miss anything coming out here in the future. Max Williams, 402-7788 on Facebook. Richmond Area Foreclosures on YouTube. Max Williams Realtor. Thanks so much for taking the tour. Have a great day.